everyone, and welcome to today's Digital Dealer Webinar. Our, today, our webinar today is sponsored by Cobalt, an ADP company. The topic is the Anti-Overview, Specific Tips for Customer-First Selling. Our speaker today is Rich Reikis. He's Cobalt Performance Improvement Consultant. The video today will be broadcasted through your computer speakers. If in any trouble, please use the hand symbol below your name and alert me, Maria Burkell, I'm the host, and I can send you the teleconference call information. If you're using the teleconference portion, you should see a pop-up window similar to the one to the right. Please use your attendee ID number when you sign in as it is unique to you. If you're having any trouble, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom right of your screen. If you could via the phone or through your computer speakers, all lines will be muted throughout the presentation. We will be holding a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, but you, if you have any questions during, please use the Q&A feature at the lower right of your screen. The moderator is Maureen Condon. She's the editor for Dealer Communications, Dealer and Digital Dealer Magazine. Maureen? Thanks, Maria. Our speaker this morning is Rich Reikus. He's from Colt, and he's their performance improvement consultant. Born into the automotive industry, Rich Reikus has emerged as one of the industry's mere speakers and trainers. Client list includes nearly every top 10 dealer group, plus own clients such as Infinity, Nissan, Subaru, Volkswagen, Lexus, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC. While specializes in live seminars and webinars, he is most at home inside the dealership, which carries a thorough understanding of dealer-level concerns and opportunities. He is guided throughout the automotive industry due to his digital expertise and ability to speak the language, which enables his clients to attain higher than ever levels of performance. Rich, would you like to begin? I want to begin. <laughs> so, thank you, Maria and Maureen. I do appreciate that. Hope everybody can hear me uh, pretty well out there. I know we have technology involved. So my name is Rich Reich. I'm going to be your uh, kind of host for the next hours as we go through this. I love and hate webinars because I love webinars. So it's so easy to give great information to everybody in a quick form. You can get the information that you want. What I don't like about them is I can tell you guys are goofing on right now. People are checking email. People are taking phone calls. You know, the good news is I can't hear you, so that's fine. So I completely get this. We're going to go through this real quick because I talk awfully fast, which means you have to listen awfully fast. I love what we're discussing today and the topic of conversation because it really hits home. The first, this is kind of the overall agenda of what we're going to talk about. We have a fantastic study for you that we just completed that's hot off the press. So we're going to share Bits of information on that study, a retail e-commerce guide, what I like to do is do the payoffs. So what does that mean to you? Why is that important to me? What do I need to do to help sell more cars? And as we go through this, we're going to look at phone, floor, walk-in traffic, um, sorry, internet traffic, and say, what can I do to capitalize on that? How can I take advantage of this information? Because at the end of the day, it truly is about selling more cars. All companies try to drive a lot of traffic to your dealership, but the goal, goal is to take those customers, turn them into opportunities, turn them into sales. So when we start looking at some of the statistics, you already know most of this. And now the people on this phone, you completely get it. It, it seems everywhere I go, any attend a seminar, a webinar, if you're just in Orlando for the digital dealer uh, workshops, if you're you know, in Vegas for the driving sales workshops, you get so much out of that. So, so much of this information I'm going to share with you, you probably already know. So, your goal of this webinar is, what can I take out of it? What information could impact my life and help me start selling more cars? So, we know that 9 out of 10 people use the Internet to buy cars. I mean, everybody walks into your showroom and online and have gathered information. So we know that already. What, we, what is really interesting, what's really neat, and especially if you were at um, Orlando a couple weeks ago, you know much about this. It's kind of hot buzz word phrase in the industry right, right now, Zima, the zero moment of truth. And what we're really looking at here, and some of this is not as 
available for you. Sorry, everything's available for you to download. Uh, everything I talk about, if you miss something, you're able to reprint, download. That information will be there. You know, the funnel. I've talked about the funnel for decades, right? Where people get to the bottom of the funnel and then we make a purchase decision. Well, what we're really seeing is that funnel has changed. It's not so much, hey, I called the dealership, I got a price on a vehicle, that's a low funnel lead. A lot of times today, people take different paths to purchase. So they may call you, they may email you, they may chat out with you, and based upon your response, they decide what the next step is. But water online, you know, have many different influences on the path to purchase. So for some customers, they start with inspiration. It could be the ad they see and hear on the TV. They go through the discovery phase, the engagement phase, and then to the ownership phase. So that's Mike. You'll have a digital copy available for everybody. But zero moment of truth for somebody is what makes everything so interesting in our world. The zero moment of truth for one person could be a deal writer, a Google review, a read out there that tips them to come to your store. The zero moment of truth may be a chat conversation, an email, a phone call that I have that allows me to proceed the next step. So there's so many different paths of purchase these customers that nothing is traditional anymore. We used to say that, you know, if somebody emails me and asks me for a price, well, they're ready to go. Well, today people send emails, make phone calls, get that, ask for a price, decide which vehicles they like and what they can afford, and then they go back to the top of the funnel and start doing their research. That's what we're going to share with you today. A lot of the research, a lot of the studies on the past to purchase and what you can do to capitalize on those customers. So most of you probably know the top three resources that are being utilized by U.S. shoppers. These are automotive shoppers. So we're going to take a deeper dive. And remember, it's a webinar. I can't go deep into anything. I only have one hour. For every topic that I talk about, I could do an hour on alone. So that's why it's just imperative you get what you want to get out of this webinar. So we're going to look at the resources used by U.S. shoppers, and these are automotive shoppers. So we're going to look at independent sites. We're going to search engines and how they utilize those. And, of course, your website and why it's so important to have a great website. If you look at third-party, independent websites, if you will, you, the retailer, have no control of those sites. You cannot influence them on what they're putting on Kelly, Edmonds, AOL, at Autos, all those different sites. But what you can do and what you should be doing in knowing what those sites are saying, knowing what they are saying about you, your product, your dealership, and use that information to your advantage. You know that Kelly Blue Book gives fair market value. You know that Edmund gives true market value. And when a customer asks you a price question, you know they've been online, you know they've been shopping, so knowing what these sites are seeing about you and your products is going to make you more consultative. And that's what a consumer wants to be. I want to have a fantastic experience. So while you cannot control independent sites, you can be familiar with those sites and use them to your advantage. You know, when a customer says, what's your best price on that vehicle? Go to Kelly. Go to Edmonds. Ask that customer. I'm going to ask you, have you been online to see price of our vehicles? Sure I have. What sites have you visited? And no matter what site that customer says, you come back and say, love that site. Site. We use it all the time at our dealership. So know what those sites are and use them to your advantage. Now, when you start looking at Google, Yahoo, Bing, the search engines out there, you have limited control. Sure, you can buy your way to certain positions, and you can go out there and spend a ton of money. But you, you're influencing the search engines, and that's a, that you know that gives you a little bit more of an advantage. But it's about being a really smart marketer using the zero moment of truth as EMAP that you are found on those sites. Because if somebody does a Google search and let's say uh, an Audi dealer in Los Angeles and your dealership's name does not come up, you don't exist. It's just that simple. So having that presence out there and taking advantage of your dealership's area, geography, and name gives you limited control over those search engines. And a lot of you have multiple sites out there. There. So the only thing you really can control is your site. But we think about all the different paths 
that a consumer may go down to find your store. They may go to Chevrolet.com and do a dealer locate and find a website. They may go just through an organic search engine, you, you have Google, Yahoo, or Bing, type in your dealership's name and find another site. They may go to a third-party site. It could be Edmunds, Auto Trader, Auto, Auto Vital, Dealix, uh, Auto USA, all those sites out there, and find another site. And for the consumer, you're getting mixed messages. And hopefully those sites, and most of the time I see the sites, they're almost identical to each other. But they may not have all the OEM specials. They may not be updated with all the information. So you're giving kind of customer a fractured shopping experience. So try not to confuse your customers. And you're also fighting against yourself. If you're spending money on two different sites, you're really competing against yourself and driving up your ad budget. So think about that as you go through this. But we do have, and what we know you have complete control of, is your website. You can put what you want in there. You know, the manufacturer restrictions are really taking handcuffs off most years. Yeah, there's certain display and certain items that they want to show prominently. You know, they get the specials, but you are in control of your dealerships. So let's look at a couple other websites. We can, you know, here's a decent looking one from you know, in Washington. But look deeper into this website. I see in the upper left hand corner, ask our internet sales consultant to get special pricing. You know, it's kind of like, really? That's why I went to your site. That's what I was looking for, the pricing. And now you're telling me that I'm not going to get the best price or a fair price over the phone. And I will also speak out of both sides of my mind. Experiment. That is the beauty of the internet. You give them a price, or you not give them a price. How do we give a price? What is a fair price? You can experiment to see what am I getting better results with, and it's really important. And when I train internet departments and phone departments, I'm always saying, and you know, if that works really, really well for you, fantastic, go with it. But do not manage the exception. I mean, you know, I was at a Cadillac dealer yesterday. They have a gorgeous CTSV uh, in the middle of their showroom, and I think it's one of the hottest cars ever produced. You know, and if I go to their website, it says call for price. Yeah, one of two, three hundred people may call for price. I already know the price of that vehicle it is. And you may get used car, new car manager that said it said that says, "See, I told you it worked." Look at the people that are calling in or emailing and asking for a price. You're getting opportunities. So doing this. You know, if it's working, completely great. If it's not, you know, you don't know if it's working, it's probably not working. And you get other websites. This is just screaming at me. You know, the red and background, there's a lot of calls for action, which normally is pretty good. But this is their homepage. And it's just screaming at me. And as a consumer, I may look at this one and say, um, what is here? And where do I, you know, go? So it's a little difficult to navigate. You want to make it clean and simple. As a consumer, I just want to get the information that's important to me. I want to get there one or two clicks as quickly as I can. So we ask the generic and general question, why is your website so important to you? And this is something you all know. You know, it's the customer's first impression. Everybody calls it your other front door. Right? When you think about how many show people walk into your showroom over the course of a month, I mean if you're selling a hundred new and pre owned combined, you probably got somewhere around four to five hundred people that walk into your dealership. But you probably had four to five thousand minimally that went to your website. So you ten times the amount of traffic is going to your website, you want to put your best foot forward and, and do that very well. It is a new meet and greet. When I train sales consultants, I'm always talking about the road to the sale. The first step of the road to the sale in any avenue, anything we look at, is the meet and greet. If on a showroom lot, we do a fantastic meet and greet. And we know the sale could be won or lost in that first 10 seconds of a meet and greet. If it's an email, and I send a customer an email, the first email I send, that's meet and greet. The first phone call, I to the consumer. That's your meet and greet. And now when I look at your website, that's a meet and greet. So it's imperative that we do a great job with that every time. And you know what? We've seen this over the years where there's dealerships out there that are in the middle of nowhere that are able to capitalize on a huge entire area. And some viewers are advertising across the entire U.S. as their territory. You know, that, that strategy is always a little bit difficult to embrace and wrap your arms around. But again, 
it, it depends if it's working or not. That's the one I always say. If it feels great. If you don't know if it does, that's a challenge. So you can extend your local market through, you know, SEO, SEM, display, remarketing, all that, you know, that you want to take advantage of. And we're looking at the readiness of people that travel today. It's astonishing how likely people are willing to drive over 20 miles. And you start looking at that 30% of automotive shoppers are willing to drive over 20 miles. So that's why when I get an email lead from say that's you know a half hour, an hour, two hours, four hours away from my dealership, I don't dismiss them. I necessarily think that they're using me to get a better price over their local competition. I'm asking questions. I do a quick needs analysis. And one question might be, you know, I see that you're located in San Diego and I'm in Los Angeles. I'm just curious why you chose my dealership over local dealers in your area. And they'll tell you, hey, I'm moving there. I live there. I drive through there. It's an old address. Um, or I don't like the dealer that's close to me. And I chose you. So people are willing to drive farther for a better experience, and that's what they need to get from you. So when we look at your website, what we should be doing, make it easy on the customers. You know, most of the times I want to go to your website, most people want a phone number or an address. That's really the number one thing they look for. You know, it's so often I hear about bounce rate on websites, and I'm saying, well, isn't your phone number and your address right on your homepage? Well, yeah. well that's what we're looking for. So click the back arrow, that created a bounce rate, but the information I wanted. So to me, bounce rate, well, it's a relevant number. If you see alarming changes in that, it's probably, I got the information I needed. But the people that go deeper into your website, the people that are truly engaged with you, they want to see your inventory. They want to look at your makes and models that you have out there. You can leverage what your OEM is doing for you. They constantly have incentives. And remember, it's the OEMs that create brand and product awareness for you and your dealership. They are the ones that get that consumer interested and try to drive that traffic to your store, be it from email or walk-in. Yeah. So take advantage of what they're putting out there because that's what got this consumer excited. That's what made them tip to your direction. That could be their zero moment of truth where they say, really, one night least special in that vehicle? I'm coming and that's what, you know, keep your dealership in front of them. Keep your local ads and cur- your, your ads current. Have a newspaper ad. If you have specials, the worst thing I can do as a consumer is click on it and see nothing. So make sure that your website is always up to date. And if you can get somebody either in your dealership or outside your dealership that does that for you, that monitors that for you, you're at the end of the game. You never have to worry about it. So keep everything current. And reputation is key. Uh, I love social media. I think it's uh, very important to a dealership, but it's really hard to show that. Because on Facebook, because I'm on Twitter, I sold tons of more vehicles. But I can tell you, based on every study and research that we saw, based upon your Google and Curator and Yelp reputation, make the decision to visit you or not visit you. It's that important that you take advantage of your store's reputation. And obviously, we could do a complete one or two hour webinar just on reputation management and how important that is. And you're getting that all over the country. So we're not going to dwell deeply on that. And then, you know, the little stuff that you do. You know, this is where I love social media. I have customers that I'm part of your community, that I care about your community, community and that builds trust trust for me, the consumer. So that's what I'm always looking for. And while we know that of all visitors that go to your website, it's very few people that you really submit a lead. Most go to your website and walk into your store. The second big area is I will call. I'll pick up the phone and call your store. People are less willing to give out their email address today. They're more willing just to call your walk-in or use chat as a medium. So the number is really low of the people that actually submit an email to you. But there are still is a good consistent number. Well, we haven't seen email leads go up the last five years in, in any kind of huge amount unless you're buying a lot of 30 or third party leads. Mostly website email leads have been consistent for the last few years. Now, here's one of the first results we're seeing of this 2010-2011 study, which is the basis of all 
this, just come to me at Doug. You got to get this. Top respond, or your property prefers respond to every lead. We get that. You know, 99% of people on this phone, I guarantee you, falls in that category. I get an email lead, I respond to it. What you don't know is it goes into spam or not. So when we mystery shop you in part of the study, and please feel free to ask any questions you might. I can try to, you know, feel my fly or Marina and Maria can handle them while I'm talking. Part of the study was the mystery shop of the consumers. And if they send something back, we do check our spam. So we, we you know, this is real good information that we're constantly monitoring and looking at. Look at the response time. Oh, it's gotten so much better. Now this is the best of the best. So the statistics that I'm sharing with you are top performer statistics. So our response time as an industry is under, not as an industry, just for the top performers, has got to under one hour. Talk a lot about response time in our industry. We're going to talk a lot more about why it's so important to respond as we go through this. And this is a cool study from our friends from Urban Science. And you could see that they did a study that showed, hey, just respond quickly. In fact, if you respond within one hour, you are roughly close 13% of the your traffic they did today. So they love when other companies put these studies out there. So they're showing a response time. And I'm going to show you how a quick response surrounded by quality can really drive these percentages. Up. So, no, response time is imperative. The fact that you guys get measured so heavily on this sometimes is challenging to me. And I know we ex need to exceed customers' expectations, but I'm going to tell you, response time that is not a good message doesn't matter. Respond with a great message, that's what makes the moment of truth happen for the consumer. And I know for the internet people that are on this phone right now, the bane of your existence is this. Somebody submits an email lead to me, respond via phone and email, and never hear from them again. That is, you know, universally the biggest challenge I see when I walk into a dealership. Nobody responds to me. That's why we need to look and see what are you saying. We tell it to the customer because quality matters. Eighty percent of the customers said if I receive a poor response, I would sorry, I'm going to go back. If I receive a poor response, I go elsewhere. It's just that simple. So if I ask you a question and you answer it, you're on my list. And another study that we've looked at also says if you're a Chevrolet dealer and you give me the information I'm looking for, you're off my list. So you actually ruin it for the entire brand. Let's give this consumer a great experience. Let's answer their questions. So when we start looking at some of the elements of a good response, and, you know, this is, Lot to look at on the screen right now, and it's things you probably already know. Can the con can the internet sales consultant spell? You know, are they answering my questions? Are they giving me alternatives? Are they giving me details? The basics, good response that you should all be doing today at your dealership. But with mystery shops, we really ask the customers, and this is just the core of the mystery shop. We found we went to a dealer's website. We set a lead on a new vehicle. We set a second lead on a pre-owned vehicle. We asked two questions. Do you have it? I mean, how much is it? And do you have it? That was it. He said, we're really interested in this Honda Accord. Does it come in black? How much is it? And we asked those two questions, and we provided a local phone number for the ship to call us back. So here comes a bunch of results from this study. And this is where you have to measure and give yourself to your competition. And I will state this one more time. The results you're about to see are really the best of the best, the top tier people. So 40% of the time, the best of the best answered, give it how much it is. 40% of the time. When we break them down to the individual questions, the percentages are going to go way up because for some reason, dealerships answer one or the other, but only the best of the best in both questions. And I ask you, do you think consumers already know the price of the vehicle they're looking at? Do you think they know the cost of the vehicle? Do you think they already know incentives on that vehicle? I mean, you start looking at how much time this consumer spends online, how much time they spend shopping at all these 
these different sites. They're really looking for you to confirm this information. And I'm not saying you need to be the lowest price or the best price. In fact, I'll say the opposite. But you have to answer the questions. And how you answer it makes all the difference in the world. And we dig a little deeper on this where we ask, how much is it? The best, the best. In question 57% of the time. So great job, the top performers. There's so many dealerships that refuse or, well, you know, that, ve- you know, that vehicle MSRP is this. You know, we want to answer our price question. It, sometimes it's just easy to say, and I really want to give them to the phone, um, that vehicle starts out at, at the opportunity to drive that vehicle yet. And really get pushed in the price question, Go to a third-party website and use that to your advantage. Use admins. Use Kelly. Use TrueCar. Quit turning out there. Use these sources as a, a crutch for you to answer those questions. And, you know, a pretty easy question to ask, right? Do you have it? 70% of the top performers answer that, which means 30% of the people are not even acknowledging the consumer questions. These are the best of the best. Acknowledging that question is, sure, we have that in stock. And I'm sorry, if you don't have a Malibu in stock? Absolutely, right? So I would never tell a customer, I would say, I currently do not have any Malibu in stock. I have access to hundreds of them. Let me ask you, have you had the opportunity to drive a Malibu yet? And yeah, you find out where they're at. Don't you the customer because you don't have that? And when we start looking at some good responses, and this is kind of a really thing that I love about this one that we put together. Yeah, I'm going to give you an examples here. Uh, does this really answer the question on why I would choose your dealership? And let me give you a better answer. So we carry the largest inventory area, and I'm sure we have a vehicle that fits your needs. Really? We're the big, we're the best, right? You're kidding, right? How about going something like this? We are our customers, the guaranteed lowest price. Well, that doesn't answer my question either, does it? So you need to come up with something a little bit better than that. You know, and this might help. You know, we do have 2012 Silverados that you inquire about. The MSRP is $34,320. Our special internet pricing is 326 which includes a major incentive. If you give an incentive, you've got to give an expiration date. So if you have a lease special, finance special, cash back, whatever it might be, you have to let me know that it expires. Otherwise, there's no sense of urgency. And what you can see, I really like about the short responses. It gives me a hyperlink. So that 2012 make model is hyperlinked to that vehicle within my website. I want to constantly drive traffic back to my website at all times. Well, deeper into this, 6% of the best of the best offered a test drive. I'll see this number is this model. You have to invite me in. Our friends from Dealix did a study a couple of years ago where they listened to over 3,000 inbound phone calls, and 70% of the time, a consumer called in, the sales consultant or the BDC representative invited the customer in. In, in. I want to drive the car, I want to buy the car. Offer me a chance to come in. And when you put a sentence out there like, you know, something like this, hey, feel free to stop by any time. Does that mean, does that tell me to come in? I don't think so. As opposed to, I will call to make sure you receive this information and set up a time for you to come in and take a test drive. Or if it's more convenient, I'd be happy to bring the vehicle to your home or office. And any dealership that doesn't offer that, you are missing opportunities. I Customer to come in. I share current incentives with them, and I offer to bring the vehicle to home or office. What a difference maker! What a way to break the ice with the customer. Offer to bring the vehicle. If they bite, I will qualify them. I review this one more time. We go through the phone section of this. I offer that to everybody. It's a great way to invite the customer in. And when we start thinking about why me, why choose this dealership? Well, 42% of the best of the best gave me any reason to, to choose you over somebody else. If I'm a Chevrolet dealer and I'm selling Malibu, I'm sorry. I can go buy a Malibu for invoice from any Chevy dealer in the country. So now price is out of the equation. It comes down to why would I choose your dealership over other dealerships? 
give me some reasons. Give me a, a reason to come in, be it reliability, safety features of the vehicle, cost of ownership. Give me a reason to buy a vehicle from you. And when we start looking at, hey, the 2012 Nissan Altima is a great choice. Really? Uh, that really, really hits home as opposed to the 2012 Nissan Altima is a great choice. Car driver magazine and consistent the Altima as one of the top vehicles in its class. And what could make that even stronger? Cover link. Current driver write that article that talks about the Altima. You, you know, I don't want to read a book from you as a consumer, but if I use, I'll click on a link and I'll go to that site. So you make it really, really easy. And you know, uh, an incentive to buy now, 20% of best of the best be me. I read the buy now. Now. It's a great time to buy, really. What is the incentive there? Give me a reason to buy now. Create that sense of urgency that says why now is a good time to buy. Don't just say, hey, we got vehicles laying all over the lot. Come on in and buy one. That doesn't work for me. We have some great deals on the Model Q X. If you buy from May 12, we're offering $2,500 off MSRP. So we gave them an expiration date, and we gave them a great deal. You guys know most of this. It's just do it. It. Look at the emails you sent out. Look at the voicemails that you leave and get better at what you do. You have to be the best at what you do. You need to beat your competition. That's what makes it easier on you. And consumers don't know what, what to do next. Remember, if I sent you an email, I'm not sure what's going to happen next. You need to tell me. And the fact that you put in there, hey, feel free to call me anytime. Or you leave a voicemail that says, hey, if you're still in the market, give me a call. You're in. It's not on a next step. Give me something tangible so I can really wrap my arms around. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to call me at. I'll be calling you today to schedule an appointment to test drive the vehicle that you chose. That's a better call to action. That's a better next step for this customer. And it's my favorite. And I can do an entire webinar just around the inventory alternative. I will try not to speak too deeply on this, but 44% ever said, here's an alternative. And we have many to choose from. Really? Well, that's not an alternative. An alternative vehicle is, and you've seen a lot of companies out there, Response Logic does it very well with good, better, and best on their vehicles. That's something you can be doing at your dealership all the time. Because here's the deal. If I'm selling a Silverado to a consumer, I'm telling you, load that bad boy up with everything. You know, it's going to have the navigation, fast Bluetooth, all we have, true cab. You know, all the good bells and whistles that I want. Nobody builds the base vehicle. People always build the car of their dreams, the car of their wishes. And we know a simple pickup truck, my vehicle can raise, range from 15000 to 50000 So people build a vehicle. If you don't give me an alternative, so if somebody's going to pull the silver auto, and what's your best price on this fifty thousand dollar vehicle? Maybe you can do it for forty five or whatever that number is. But you better let me know that I have other new that start as low as twenty one thousand five hundred and go up from there. But I also have, and this is the silver bullet. I have a two thousand and nine silver rod. It has twenty three thousand miles on it. It is certified pre owned. You can get that for 22500 and completely certified. Please click here to see if my photos and more information because the real deal here is if I can't afford your vehicle, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. And it's simple. So if I come in and drive a vehicle and don't buy a vehicle, I'm not, and the biggest reason people drive and don't buy, I don't like you. It's that simple. I can't afford your vehicle. I'm not going to embarrass myself. I know you. You don't know me. I'm not going to embarrass myself and tell you that I can't afford that vehicle. Send me a pre-owned alternative every time. Get options. Make it the either or close. Would you like this new or would you prefer the certified pre-owned? When I was walking the lot selling cars and the consumer said, can you do better on price? The thing I said is, which options would you like to remove? You told me the navigation may not be that important. You told me that Bluetooth may not be, may not be that important. Oh, no, I want all those. The consumer says, "Well, have you considered certified pre-owned? You know, at Lexus we have the best certified pre-owned. I don't care who I'm talking about, right? It's the best certified pre-owned program in the market. Let me share with you a little bit about what the certified pre-owned program is, and see if you're interested in taking a look at that. And that does is 
per gross, per tax price, gives you their either or close, gives you a, another leg to stand on. It does so much. So as I follow up with the consumer, we know oh, the best of best are offering this pre-owned alternative 44% of the time. Most people don't do it. It's truly a silver bullet. Give me the pre-owned alternative, specifically CPO, if you participate in that program. And when we start looking at the elements of an email and good response, this really is a good initial email. I look at these and say, holy cow, that's a book. That's a really long email. But you know what? Um, initial email, you really need to put your best foot forward. On subsequent emails, they're going to be short and sweet to the point. I may cut and chunk out this one a little bit and give them the information they're looking for, reasons to buy, reasons to service, all in there. But this one's loaded with great information that I may probably hang on to. A good subject line is important. We cut off the signature on this one. This is a great example of a vehicle, an email response that you can send to a consumer. Don't worry if you can't get through it all. You can go and read it later. So the key to this whole email program is it's not just about sending a message, it's about having an effective message. Why me? Why dealership? Why my product? Why would I choose you over everything else that's out there? And when we start talking about phones, oh, you know, for 20 years, 30 years, we always said the biggest profit leak at most dealership is the way phone calls are being mismanaged. They went through this whole Internet phase where the emails were flying in and people were not familiar with what to do and how to handle them. So we said the biggest profit leak in a dealership was emails. We're right back to phones. We are right back to the biggest challenge at most dealerships is giving good phone. Do a really great job. So the customer provides a phone number the best of the best call 66% of the time. And those 66% that call 81% call on the first day. I will tell you right now that the average dealership when provide a phone number only 40% of the time do they ever call consumer back. So here's the deal. Consumer may say a preferred method of contact email, but if you a phone number, they gave you permission to call. If they give you a phone number, they expect you to call. Pick the phone and call me. That's what I want. If you think it's easier to send an email first and then pick up the phone, go right ahead. I have time. I just pick up the phone and call the customer. And you usually take care of me. My response time is fantastic. I catch them while they're still in the ether, right? They're still excited about the vehicle. It's like doing a test drive with them. They get in that ether and they get hypnotized by the new car smell. I call them right away. 81% of the 66% that they call do it on day one. You have to make phones part of your process. If you don't, you are missing the boat. And if you tell me you don't have time to make a phone call, then you don't have time to do an email. It's more important to make that phone call than it is to make said email. Your attitude, your enthusiasm does not come out in email. Your person can come out on a phone. Use the phone. It's the number one weapon you have. Before you make that phone call, have a plan. You know you're going to get voicemail most of the time. So you prepare for the phone call. Have the vehicle that they inquired about. Have alternatives available. Have price questions available. Be ready to say, why me? Why the dealership? And always ask for the appointment. So in case they do pick up the phone, you are prepared. You're not leaving just a quick voicemail to this customer. If you are prepared for the call, you're in great shape. You have to prepare for that call. And if you have a plan before you make a call, then if you get voice Email, you will have a plan and you will know what to say. So, said it earlier in this webinar, plan is key. Here is a simple, easy script on voicemail. And people can look at script, and I'm going to tell you it takes 35 to 45 seconds to leave this in a nice, easy motion to the customer. And it's really answering the questions, it's giving me value. It's going above and beyond because think about it. I come from home from a hard day at work. I have three voicemails sitting on my answer machine. The first one says, I have great news. Please give me a call at your earliest convenience. The second one says, we're having a big sale. Please give me a call at your earliest convenience. And here's the third one. When are you going to call back? You, know, you can make fun of me that this is a long voicemail, but I'm going to tell you, the people that leave better voicemail get better results. It's the phone your best weapon. Leave it our voicemail to get people to call you back. So we're ready to leave that voicemail. Speaking clearly. I know how fast I talk. I try to slow down all the time. 
speak slowly and clearly. If you're going to take your time to cross something off on your list, do well. Do not leave them a message on the fly. Prepare for it. Spell your name. Repeat your phone number twice because it's a pet peeve of most people in this world. If I have to go back and listen to a voicemail a second time, leave your phone number twice. Let's state the reason. And if your content is good and compelling, I'll listen to it. I'm not going to hang up on your voicemail. I'm going to listen to it. And if somebody else is screaming your voicemails, they may say, hey, somebody to this lot of information that you may want to listen to that voicemail. I so many viewers wait for the next day. Call me right away. You know, call me right away, and then I'll make that decision if you're gas worthy or not. I will decide if you're worth if it's my time's work coming into your dealership. Yeah, gas worthy is funny, right? So I'm from Seinfeld, you know it. So many times do you follow up before you give up on a lead? We sit everywhere. People give up way too early. The industry best over the first 14 days, where we did the mystery shot. So we're able to catalog and track phone calls and email. They follow up six times in the first 14 days. And if you think about that, on day one, I made a phone call and left an email. On day two, I made a phone call. On day three, I made a phone call or left an email. I take my foot off the gas pedal after day three. I give them a day to breathe. Maybe on, maybe they're out of town, maybe they're distracted. So we've always had this 72-hour rule in the dealership that if somebody calls or walks in and a vehicle within 72 hours. I agree. It's still pertinent today. They're going to die pretty quick. So email, long-term follow-up, when you receive an email lead, long-term follow-up is the key difference maker between performers and high performers. High performers follow up for a long period of time and they do a better job at it. And the science that this study shows if you contact, it's like the sweet spot is five times. So once you hit five contact attempts with a consumer, your conversion rate goes up. And it's kind of like the sweet spot right there. So the average dealership in the U.S. follows up about three times before they give up. Say it one more time. The average internet department will follow up three times on an internet email opportunity before they give up. And what that means is I sent two emails, I left one voicemail, say they must not be in the market anymore. We know long term follow up with a great message is the key to conversion. Do a great job. And if you can combine no attempts with speed, you know, contact within zero two hours and respond, you know, five times. Urban Science did a great study that it said the sweet spot is five attempts, respond with under two hours, you have a 14.7% close rate. So this is a tough slide to read through. You can read through it at your own leisure. What I'm telling you is follow up fast, follow up often, and you sell more vehicles. It is that simple. Don't give up on this consumer. Most dealerships give up way too quick. So when you look at the top five review tips for handling leads, respond quickly. We know response time drives closing ratios. Response time takes the customer off the street. Response time stops the customer from shopping. Response time allows you to create a relationship with this customer. We get it. It does all. But if you don't answer my questions, you're not in the game. So answer the price and availability questions at all times. Give me a reason to buy from you, your store. Sell value. The car is the car. Give me a reason to buy from you. Make this experience fantastic for me. Invite me in, for God's sakes. Please, invite me in, because that's what I want to do. Or offer to bring the vehicle for, for, to me. And if the shopper doesn't answer, don't give up. High performers follow for a longer period of time. They have a documented process in place that allows them to follow up for a longer period of time. And what percentage of shoppers will pick up the phone if you call them? Get emails, right? Let's take a look at this that piggybacks off that last question. So, if you were able to categorize and track website visitors for one month, so this is the part of being a really big company. We have access to so much data. So, you know, it, it, 10 million website visitors in the course of a month, and of that 10 million, a million of them made a phone call. They are sales or service, but you know, a million of them made a phone call, and 130,000 submitted an email lead. So we start looking at 10% of the people made a phone call, and 1% of that total traffic sends an email to you. My really rough, easy arithmetic. We have to be really good on the phone and realize that most people that go to your website are going to walk in. 
Second biggest area is phone, and by far and away the least is email. So we should be great on phones, and we'd be even better on meet and greet needs and analysis when we walk in to the ownership. So there's the power of knowing numbers and what's happening. Customers want information, right? When they email you, when they email you, they want information from you. If you don't give them this information that I already know, you're going to be a reason to go elsewhere. So answer the questions for me. Sell the appointment, not the car. And absolutely, Ed Lewis, you'll be able to download and print this out anytime you want. And I put all my contact information. we got Q&A coming up as well. I've always said this. Sell the appointment, not the car. You know, a customer asks me a question, you have to answer it and then invite me in. So we're going to do that in a couple quick clicks on this. And right here was my inbound call. I may put all four of my little talk tracks right there. When a customer calls you or when you're calling out, the very first question that you ask, so I'll let them ramble on. I'll let them ask a question. I'll let them say, you know, it's what's your best price on that vehicle? And I'll come back and say, that vehicle starts up at, have you had the opportunity to drive that vehicle yet? If they haven't driven the vehicle, an email, it's about 70% of the time when six minutes an email leads to you, they have not driven the vehicle yet. And if we're caught up on price, if we're discussing on payments, and they've driven the vehicle yet, why are you doing that? You're shooting on girls in the foot at that point in time. But I invite them in. If you know, that didn't work, I share with them current incentives. And I asked the question, I used to work with Chip Turner and some of that Ford has on that vehicle. Well, I know there's low rate financing or there's a special lease. Oh, great. So then you do know that we have those two options. One's a two ninety nine dollars lease, 36 months, and then there's at the end of the month. Or you have to pay cash, we have a $2,500 rebate on that, or you give a third one. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I got 1.2% HR on that vehicle. So I share current incentives and invite them in. And then, you want to do a magical question? It's not working. Hey, would it be more convenient, Ed, if I brought that vehicle to your home or office? And what I want their answer to be is, you would do that? Sure, I do. Would. Well, what are you looking for? And I start qualifying them from there. And if that doesn't work, sorry, Mr. You car, used car manager, I'm going right to the trade appraisal. What are you driving today? What time you have that professionally appraised? You know, be looking to resell that to us or sell that outright or what are your plans with that vehicle? And I am going to flat out ask them, would you like me to appraise that vehicle right now? They say, well, sure, or no, I'll come in. Perfect. Either way, you win. If you appraise the vehicle over the phone, the only reason I appraise a trade sight unseen is to get to this punchline. If any reason you choose not to buy your next vehicle from us, I would love the opportunity to buy that vehicle from you. It sounds like a beautiful vehicle. I can't wait for my pre-owned manager to see it and tell you exactly what we'd buy that vehicle from you for. It works, and it works every time. So, you know, have your skill sets there on the phones at all times. So we're looking at, you know, tips for handling phone calls. Listen to calls. People get better when you listen to calls. People get better when they know other people are listening to their calls. Let them assess their performance, right? Let them tell you what they thought of the call. Create talk traction scripts. Use those. Get them down so it becomes second nature to you. It makes people better. Coach staff managers. Everybody knows what to say to the customer. Coach them. Listen to the call. Coach them. Say, here's what you could have done. Here's what I would have done. Here's what I think would make a difference. Practice, practice, practice. Role play over and over. When you have your Saturday sales meetings, role play over and over. And if you do listen to phone calls, criticize in private. You know, if somebody does something wrong, criticize them in private, but praise them in public. If somebody did a great job, play that for your Saturday morning sales. Uh, you know, so praise them in public, criticize in private. And most people are not contacting you, so they're walking into your store. And I'm going to ask you, has your showroom process changed with the shopper behavior? Process, sales cars, not price. We as showroom sales consultants have to do a better job. We have to do a great needs analysis. We have to ask the customer, what sites have you been to? Where have you been? And so that we can take advantage of that. Most showroom customers don't like internet customers. And I'm going to tell you right now, everybody that walks in is an internet customer. So you better change your thinking. 
you have to change your model on how we approach and how we handle these customers and how we do our needs analysis and embrace the fact that this customer knows as much about your vehicle as you do, but sometimes they're confused. Sometimes they need more information. So about you guys, Mr. Managers, to inform and educate the showroom consultants on everything, everything. So, you know, really review independent sites. Go to Kelly. Go to Edmund. See what they had to say. And use that information to your advantage. Go to Chevrolet, like Puick, Hyundai, yeah, you know, and learn what they're saying about you and your products so you can have more product knowledge and utilize those sites. Use your website as a tool. Use site to show the consumer and engage them. Show them that current incentives because the current incentives are there. They're on your website for them to see right now. So constantly do that. Coach your showroom and BDC representatives on how to use this information. Build a consumer first oriented staff. The customer in control today. As much as we would like to think that we're always in control, when they're phone, when they're an email, they're in complete control. The only way we can totally regain control is when we start asking questions. When they're in front of me, I start asking questions, and I butt up with them, and I get them to like me a little bit, because after all, the one thing that has never changed in my industry, if I like you, I'll buy a car from you. If I don't like you, I don't care what you're selling. I'm buying a car from you. Be that email, phone, or face-to-face. If you don't respond to my questions in email, I don't like you. You don't give me the answers I'm looking for on the phone, I don't like you. If you don't put you on the meet and greet, get off my list. It's just that simple. We have to have a customer-first mentality and realize that they know a lot about this vehicle, but sometimes more than us. And complacency kills. Complacency kills everybody in a dealership. When you know where you are, so I look at you, the, the old tired saints, you can't manage what you can't measure, what, what measure tends to improve. That's so oh, important in dealership today. When you know where you are with appointment set rate, appointment show rate, appointment call rate for every M, right, for text, phone, email, walk-in, when you know where you are today and you find your dream, around that, that you can start growing as a dealership. So awareness plus action equals growth. Take advantage of that today. And remember, the customer is number one. Tells a lot. And so we know, you know what the reality is, because perception is reality, right? And it's more important what the customer hears. You know, I may say something like, hey, I got to be my best price. And you come back and it's not truly your best price. Your, your credibility, where I prefer to say, you know, we have competitive pricing or fair pricing. Have you been to this website? So it's whatever the customer thinks, whatever they believe. You be the most honest person in the world, give all the information in the world, but that customer could hear one thing that does, they don't like about you or what you said, and they're gone. So their perception is number one. It's the most important thing they have, the most important thing that we can do. So with that, we open this up to q and I was hoping this would take about five minutes. I think I'm right on that, Maureen and Maria, right on that number. My contact information is right there. I do believe we're going to open up for questions right now, and I'll sit back and breathe a little bit and answer questions. And we'll also throw some questions out there for you. So go right ahead, Maria. Thank you, Rich. This is Maureen, and um, great presentation. We have a question here from Jeff Van He. He said, what is an acceptable bounce rate in your opinion? So it is a good question. And the bounce rate question, Jeff, absolutely drives me nuts. So, you know, I see websites sometimes with 30%, 40% bounce rates. And, you know, usually that's about driving relevant traffic to your dealership. So a lot of companies are just big and driving traffic. You know, if they're just driving traffic to your website, you'll probably have a high bounce rate. If they're in really relevant traffic to your dealership, then it shouldn't be as high of a bounce rate. So an acceptable, somewhere in the in probably 20 to 30% range of bounce rate, because I'm going to tell you right now, half of those people, it's not bounce. I got the information I was looking for, and I clicked the back arrow. I went deeper into your website. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit there. Okay, well, thank you. We have a question here from Teresa Johnson. Um, what's the benchmark for Internet leads to appointment set? I heard 35%, but it seems high. What do you think? Uh, 
awesome question. And now you hit me in my sweet spot too. So 30 to 35 for percent is absolutely a great number. I have a lot of dealers with a 50% employment set rate, but here's you have to start thinking. Let's use still easy numbers right now. I see 100 email opportunities this month. By my statistics, you should set 30 to 35 appointments from those hundreds. But what you need to keep in mind is truly really expect you to be working the leads that are one, two, three, four months old. So if you see 100 email opportunities this month, I fully expect that you set two, three, five, ten, fifteen 10, 15 appointments from two, three, four, five months ago. So that goes into my appointment set rate numbers. So the 30, 35 appointments I set, that came from this month and prior month because I want you to keep working that lead. And I will give you kind of one of those secret sauce numbers right now. The average time for an internet consumer to buy a vehicle is about 28 days as an old industry average. So 28 days. That means some people are buying some email lead and they buy a vehicle in one day and some people buy 60 days. The dealership that follows up three times, you don't have time. You don't have the opportunity to get them in. The dealership that has a long-term commitment to process and follow-up, you're going to get me to come back in. So you're going to set a lot of appointments from older email opportunities that I receive. So if you're out three times and the average buy time is, three, is 28 days, that's long-term follow-up. And after 30 days to anticipate a question that's coming up next, I usually move to some sort of broadcast email. You know, I have to be smart. I have to realize that if I've had dialogue with this customer, if I've engaged with this customer, I need to be on top of this customer. So they send me an email and I've never heard back from them, and I've submitted, I sent out to 10 emails and 10 phone calls in the first 30 days. I'm going to broadcast email and keep my name in front of them. Relevant information, not just spamming them, relevant information you know, is pertinent to them with current incentives and inventory alternatives. So then there's hopefully the answer to that, 30 to 35%. I've seen some dealerships with 50%. I'm mean, the average right now somewhere around 10 to 20%. It's not an acceptable number. So great question. Thanks, Rich. We have a question here from Steve. What is the number one best way to market used vehicles on the Internet? So it's really a, a combination, in my opinion, and, you know, you're – really asking me my opinion, um, optimizing your models, optimizing search terms and words through both paid and uh, organic search is key. Uh, I have no issues with the three websites in AutoTrader and Dealer.com. Remember that as a consumer, if I go to AutoTrader, I'm going to see 10 other vehicles just like yours, so I'm losing some of my eyeballs. I'd rather drive those pre-owned numbers back to your website. So, you know, optimizing the used car pages within your website. So if somebody does a 2009 uh, search for Chevrolet Silverado, your ad copy comes up that says, click here to see a pre-owned 2009 Silverado and it takes you deep in your inventory. That means by far and away, the best way to drive that quality traffic to your dealership. Um, you know, you think about we've always had liner ads in the newspapers for years. Well, that's what we're doing with your website. We're creating online ads. So it's a combination, and to me it's about measuring of what works. If, if something works, I'm going to stick with it. If I'm getting great results from Auto Trader or Cars or uh, usedcars.com, I'm going to continue to use those. If I'm not sure if I'm getting good results, I'm going to get alternatives. And I would talk to some, you know, your website salespeople and them, you know, what's the best way to get my pre-owned inventory out there? Um, and they're going to probably tell you the same thing. Uh, you know, optimizing the pre-owned inventory within your website is truly the easiest and best way to go. And most site providers can do that for you. Thank you, Rich. We have a question here from Sean. Bosno, how do you handle the price question when you know you're not the cheapest and still set the appointment? Great question. I hate the word cheapest. Get your vocabulary. I know you're just in it to humor me. Um, the word cheap implies quality. So we want to talk about being the cheapest price. You know, lowest price, best price, that's one, one thing. So, you know, I'm going to go right back to have they driven the vehicle yet. 
So you have to be able to get them on the phone. And I realize they don't always provide a phone number, so I get the reality of that. You know, I use a lost leader to pull price normally. You know, it's that base that I would put in the newspaper if you still advertise in the newspaper to drive traffic into your dealership that nobody else really wants. So I use that base base price and I would ask that consumer have you had the opportunity to drive that vehicle yet. If they say no, mine to them is you drive that vehicle today, do you? And it takes all the defenses down. If they say yes, I've driven that vehicle, I think it was Sean that asked the question, Sean, you know then something went wrong. And I asked that consumer, oh, where did you drive that vehicle at? Why did you find a vehicle you like to own? If yes, what prevented you from buying that vehicle? If no, what were you looking for today in hand? And you know the real reason. It's not price. It's not color. It's not options. I didn't like the dealership. So what went wrong at that dealership? So don't be so caught up always in the price question. You can't win them on. In fact, the current study that we just did showed that 12% of consumers will lead you over price. That means 88% of the people we just treat differently in a nice, easy way. Uh, Sean, I use third-party sites all the time. And, you know, I'll, I'll use the third-party sites to show them what fair market value is, what true market value is of the vehicle they're inquiring about. And I'll email if I don't have a phone. I'll get them on the phone and walk them through. If I do have a phone number, but I'm going to give them this information, and I'm going to swing at them. I'm not going to just let them walk away. I'm going to take a great swing at them and try to get them engaged, and then get them come in. But it's you that sells the car. It's your process. It's your enthusiasm that's the difference maker for this customer. So I'm going to give them a fair price. And know that, you know, we always talk about, you know, it depends on the vehicle that you choose, and we're always just trying to get them in, get them in, get them in. It's always say, try it would be different. It would be more convenient if I brought that vehicle to you so you can take a look at it because, you know, the people, that person that hasn't driven the vehicle, they like the vehicle. The price truly doesn't matter at that point in time. And I understand you may be in this major metropolitan market. I was in Phoenix Monday, Tuesday of this week. I'm in L right now. I know how competitive these markets are. And I know that there's people who will take net, net, net. Give me a better experience and I'll pay more. There are a lot of limited negotiations to one price deal out there right now that don't have to give the product away. There is so little gross in a lot of the vehicles that you are selling that as a consumer, I just want to know I'm getting a fair deal. I don't get the best price, lowest price, or is your work the cheapest price? I just want to know it's fair. And that's what I'm looking for from you. Just give me a better buying experience, make it fair, prove it to me that it's a fair price, and I'll come in and buy the vehicle from you. It's the best I can answer the question for you. Well, thank you, Rich. We have another question from Teresa Johnson. She says, if someone is not specific with their Internet lead, let's say it just says a 2012 Escape, should we still send them a base price or try to get more info about specifics and then send them a base price? Uh, fantastic, Teresa. I get that all the time. And there's certainly two ways to handle that. You could send them that an escape starts out at how would you like yours configured. There's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of times you're being graded on your responses by your manufacturer. And a lot of times the manufacturer, I mean, in the old days, they were just looking for response time. Now they changed to response time plus quality of the message. So, you know, did the worship answer the price question? Do they have alternatives? So I would always answer, you know, that vehicle starts out at, and I'm going to also tell you, it's not wrong. Not given. You can say, you know, we have a lot of vehicles with a hyperlink that would work for you, and we also have certified pre-owned escapes that might work for you. I prefer to err on the side of giving them the lowest possible price on a generic escape. So the entry, entry level I, I hyperlink. I'm really big into hyperlink to drive them back to my website to try to get them to a specific vehicle at all times. So I'll hyperlink them. But if, you know, if you got on the phone, they're really easy. And I will tell you, we are more guilty on the phone of talking price than the consumer is. I listen to so many phone calls where the consumer never brings up price and the showroom or the phone consultant brings up price. I call them all the time without having to give up a price. And, you know, if they ask, I'll tell you, it starts out. If they put me harder, tell them the information. 
and I'll produce a third-party website to help validate or substantiate my argument on that. So great question. Hopefully, hopefully I answered a little bit. And feel free, if I answer your question in enough detail, my phone number is on the left and my email address is on the left if you need more detail on, on this. So Hey, Rich, we have another one here. This one's from Ed Lewis, and he says, what's the closing percentage for Internet leads? It's another one of my favorites. So there's a few different answers. Let me tell you, the average close rate in the U.S. is around 6 to 8%. Just that simple. The average close rate is 6 to 8%. A good close rate is 12% and above, and a fantastic close rate is 15% and above. I never see dealerships run over 20% for extended period of time. I see them run 20% for a couple months where they may have a super hot product, they may have fantastic incentives, but the average close rate in the U.S. was around 6 to 8% today with a 12% being considered a good job, a 15% better to be considered an outstanding job. Now, I'll throw another little caveat into that. Grosses are obviously better than fucking grosses. The internet departments that do well, that have a 15% or higher close rate, internet grosses are better than showroom grosses. This consumer wants a better way to buy a vehicle, an easier way to buy a vehicle, and the silver bullet is do you buy a new car or a pre owned vehicle? I see that's not, and right there, that I make more money normally when I sell a pre-owned vehicle. So if you, you can give her, I was going to use the word switch, but that's not politically correct. If you can give me a pre-owned alternative, you protect growth on both the new and the pre-owned vehicle. And if you give me, if they switch again, it, all habits are hard to die. But if you give me that alternative and move me to a pre-owned vehicle, your gross will be higher. And that's why high-performing internet departments that get up on vehicles end up selling as many pounds as they do need to, and that makes their gross higher than the Florida does. So hopefully I answered the question. I have a lot of dealers that are in that 15% range. I see it all the time, and they are doing a great job. Every now and then I get the order that says, oh, yeah, we're at 20 25% you know, this month or every month. I think they're not counting every opportunity that comes in. A duplicate happen, but you need to call, count, and log them all. It's the only fair way to get there. Next. Okay, thanks, Rich. Hey, we have another question from Brent McKenzie. After initial contact to a web lead by a client advisor, what are your thoughts on using autoresponders if there's no customer response? Sounds like a BW guy talking to me. So um, I, I'll give you my two cents on autoresponders in general. And I'll break it out and answer your question in more detail the way you asked. Responders. Um, in fact, if you have a good response time during business hours, there's no reason to have an autoresponder. If you have a good job at following up and you can get back, and I understand it, if you're like up in that dealer and you have one person or two people dedicated just to internet opportunities and you're start to finish. I'm going to my autoresponder on while I'm out with the customer because I may be gone at my desk for two to three hours. That I get. There's a team of people that are handling email opportunities. Why need an autoresponder if you're in front of the computer and your response time is good already? And think about it. Um, there was actually a question that came in in a private chat somehow that says, you know, if email comes in at 3 in the morning or on Sundays, the customers really expect an immediate response. I'm going to tell you they, they don't. You know, some of the manufacturers just will say that you exceed their expectations if you respond to them at 3 in the morning. Let me tell you, Fry, we burn people out in this industry. We know how key response time is. But if you are using autoresponders for your first response, think about it. I went through Kelly Blue Book. I built a vehicle. I made it a lead through Kelly Blue Book to three different dealerships. I now get an autoresponder through Kelly Blue Book. Then that email to your dealership that he says an autoresponder. So I have two autoresponders before I even got a real response from a dealership. And if you don't respond to me the next day, Kelly Blue Book is sending an autoresponder to the consumer saying, did the dealership get, get back to you and answer all your questions? So there's not potential for three autoresponses before you ever got back to the consumer. 
now companies out there, if you are struggling with response time and you're struggling with overwhelming amount of leads, I mean, I see here and that are handling with one or two people a thousand lead opportunities a month. You make a choice. Response logics and companies like that do a fantastic job of getting auto responses to the consumer that almost seem transparent, that almost seem like they're truly real responses to the customer. Now, after 30 days, and this is me getting back to answering your question, I okay with the auto responses about every other week. You know, where I'm, I have a a built-in template that looks really good, that fills in the blanks, there's no breaks in it, and I'm okay with moving them in broadcast. I've got to be smarter than the computer. I have to realize that this is a real opportunity. A lot of responses are probably going to turn them off. So in business hours, I have an autoresponder. If your response time is good during business hours, don't have an autoresponder. If your response time is not good during business hours, then the autoresponder is there just to acknowledge. I received your email. I'll be responding to you as soon as I can. Don't take one or two hours if you, you can't do it. Acknowledge that this is a responder, and in your responder, make it quality. Don't filter customers. I've actually received other responders that say, if you're ready to stop buying a car, please call me or respond to me. You right? Let your auto responder know that, you know, let your customer know that this is an auto responder. I'll respond to you as soon as possible. By the way, at Quality Chalet, we offer one, two, three. Three different thing that, things that separate you from everybody else that's out, out there. So, good question. Hopefully, to that with enough detail. Thanks. We have one last question here. This is sent from Teresa also. How do you think we should follow up with, with Internet leads? We have 180 days, but should it be longer than that? That's it, Teresa. Um, it really depends upon your staffing and the amount of volume. I really so you can do a great job at follow-up on individual leads for 180 days. It's daunting to me when you think about, you know, how long you're following up and how overwhelming and how many emails you'll be following up on, you know, six months every year. I mean, you're talking about thousands and thousands of opportunities that you're trying to follow up on. I applaud you for trying to follow up for 180 days. And I'm sure... You're, you're looking and laughing, going, okay, I'm not really responding, you know, to the person in detail that's 180 days old. My first 30 days, I have a complete process, uh, and it's usually about 10 times in the first 30 days. My next 30 days, it's once a week. My next 30 days, it's every other week. And then I move to automate. So I typically have a 90-day through follow-up process where I'm not, Scamming my customer, where I'm not taxing myself, so there's no way I can follow up on them. But I have a process in place, and, and each day I know I want to say or send via email or phone. So I don't have to think that much. I said, I'm going to go back and look at my notes and say, what was our last conversation? If it was one, and I'd be relevant to that consumer, you know, but normally I'm just going to say, hey, you know, I really have, and, and uh, Instead, whatever it might be on this specific vehicle is you know, good through the end of the month. I would love you to take advantage of that. If you can truly follow for 180 days, God bless you. It's just to me, it's a daunting task. So, right now, if you're doing it, I usually have 30 days of full court press, 90 days of once a week, 30 days of every other week, and open to broadcast email after that. So, cool. Much, Rich. Thanks for giving a great presentation here today, and we want to let our participants know that they'll be getting a short survey, and we hope you'll answer it after you exit the webinar. And if you have any additional questions, I'd like a hard copy of the recording of today's presentation, please email Maria Burkell at mburkell at dealer-communications.com. And we hope you'll stay tuned for upcoming digital dealer webinars. The next one will be on Thursday, May 10th. It's Moneyball, Prioritizing Your Digital Advertising Spend, and it will be presented by Jim Flint, President and Founder of Local Search Group. That will be 10.30 Eastern Time, I mean, I'm sorry, 11.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 Central and 8.30 Pacific. Um, and again, thank you so much, Rich, for a great presentation. Pleasure. Everyone for signing up.
on this concludes the webinar. Have a great day.